Hello everyone, welcome back to the Lee County Library Science Club. It's great to have you with us again. I know it's been quite a while, but it's wonderful to have you back. Um, and if you are not aware yet, we actually have reopened to the public. Um, so you can come visit us anytime Monday through Friday between 12 and 4. You can come in, browse, use a computer for a little bit, and we'll be happy to see you. So come in and say hi. Now, getting into the Science Club, this week, if you haven't guessed it yet, we are actually going to be talking about our eyes. And what I have here is a diagram of the human eye. So we're going to go over the major parts of the eye, what they do, how the eye works, and then our experiment at the end is actually going to use a weakness in our eyes to create an optical illusion, and it's pretty cool. We're going to start with the outer parts of the eye and work our way back into the inner parts of the eye. So we have the outer part of the eye here and the inner part of the eye back here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this clear dome shape at the front of your eye. That is called the cornea. Now what the cornea does is it takes all of the light that's outside the eye and it focuses it in towards the middle of the eye. Okay, we've talked before about how light passing through a lens can change the angle of that light and that is what the cornea is doing. It's gathering all the light from out here and focusing it towards the middle of your eye. Now it's not a very tight focus, it's not a very clear focus, but it does the majority of the light focusing before it actually gets into our eye. Now behind the cornea we have that colored ring around your eye which is called the iris. And this is the part that is different colors in every person. My eyes are brown, a lot of people have blue eyes, there's even some green or hazel. What color are your eyes? But the iris does more than just look pretty. It actually controls the next part of our eye, which is the pupil. And the pupil is that dark spot in the very center of your eye. Now, what's a little bit strange about the pupil is it's not really another part of the eye. It's actually the empty part where there's, there's nothing there and so the light goes through it. But it looks black because all the light is going in through the pu pupil and getting absorbed inside the eye. There's very little light that gets reflected back out and so the pupil appears black and dark to us. Now the pupil actually controls how much light gets into the eye. As you've probably seen, your pupil can get larger when it's dark out to allow more light into your eye so you can see better in the dark. And it also gets smaller when it's really bright to allow as little light as possible in so that you don't, you don't hurt the inner parts of your eye. And your iris, that ring, controls the size of the pupil in response to the light. So just behind the pupil is this area which is called the lens. Now this actually is a lens designed to focus the light into a clear image that our eye can perceive. And it's a little bit different from the cornea. As I said, the cornea takes a very broad area of light and focuses it smaller so that it gets through the pupil. Now that cornea provides a very broad focus of the light. Okay, it takes all of this and brings it into this small area. But the lens takes that smaller bit of light and focuses it really sharply as it comes towards the back of the eye. Now the cool part about the lens is that it's actually flexible. It's able to change its shape 
to adjust for looking close or looking really far away. And how it does this on either end of the lens is what's called ciliary muscles. And those ciliary muscles pull on the lens to adjust its focus ability. So when those muscles relax, the lens gets shorter, but it also gets fatter. And it does that when you're trying to read something that's really up close. When you're looking far away, those muscles pull, the lens gets taller, but also skinnier, and it lets you see farther away. Now once the light passes through the lens and is focused to the appropriate distance, that light goes back all the way through until it hits the back of the eye. And this thin layer along the back of the eye is known as your retina. The retina is what is called photosensitive tissue made up of different cells called rods and cones. Now, rod cells are designed to process images on a broader scale. Okay, there are rod cells all over the back of the eye. They are what allow us to have peripheral vision. But, as you know, your peripheral vision is not as clear, it's not as focused, and the colors are not as sharp in your peripheral vision. And that's because of the rod cells. The other type are called cone cells. And your cone cells are designed to hold a very small area, but to focus very sharply on that area. And that is why there's this small area called the fovea. And in here is where almost all of your cone cells are concentrated. And you'll notice it's directly behind your pupil. So when the light comes in and it's focused by the lens, your light is getting focused on the fovea, where all those cone cells are, which is why our direct vision is so clear. When we look at something, like words on a page, we are able to focus and see them sharply and clearly because of those cone cells on our retina. And all of that photosensitive tissue, what it actually does is it converts the light input, okay, the light waves that are coming into our eye, they land on this photosensitive tissue and it converts that light information into electrical signals which, if you don't know, electrical signals is how our body communicates with itself. All of the nerves that run through our body that tell us when we're cold or hot, or when you stub your toe and it tells you that it's painful, all of those are electrical signals that nerves in our body send to our brain. And so that's actually what the next part of the eye is. Down here, this piece that leaves the back of the eye and goes in and actually connects to your brain, that is the optic nerve. Optic means eye. That is the nerve of the eye that carries the electrical signals from your retina to your brain. So, just a brief recap. Your cornea provides a general focus for the light. It focuses it through your pupil, which the size of your pupil is controlled by the iris. It passes through your pupil into the lens, and the lens focuses it more sharply to the back of your eye, where it strikes your retina. Your retina receives those light waves and converts them into electrical signals. It then passes those electrical signals along the optic nerve back to your brain. It's pretty cool, huh? Now, the human eye has some really good qualities and some 
not quite as good qualities. So, one of the really good qualities of our human eye is, as I said before, the ability to focus so sharply directly ahead of you. Now this is common in a lot of predator animals. Um, birds of prey, like eagles and falcons, they actually can see even better than us at long distances. <clears throat> but in general, humans have very good long-range, sharp-focused eyesight compared to the animal world. One thing, though, that our eyes actually do worse than a lot of the animal kingdom is the speed at which we can see. The eye can process a certain number of images per second. In the human eye, it holds an image for about one fifteenth of a second, which means in general we can process about 12 images per second as separate images. Once those images start moving faster than 12 per second, we don't perceive separate images anymore. We just see a continuous image. That is actually how movies and TV and cartoons, that is how they work. It's a series of still images that are shown so rapidly that our eye perceives them as continuous, regular motion. Now there are actually a large portion of the animal kingdom that sees faster than us. For instance, in your own home, your dog perceives the world at a faster rate than you do. So it would almost be like your dog is seeing things in slow motion compared to us because they're able to watch things go by so much faster than us. For instance, if your dog sits and watches TV with you, your dog is not seeing the continuous motion that we are. Your dog is actually seeing a series of flickering images similar to if you took a, a notebook and you flipped through the pages slowly enough that you can notice the difference between those pages, that's what your dog is seeing. Now your dog only sees about 25% faster than you, but there are animals like the peregrine falcon, or the snapping shrimp, or even that house fly that's so annoying and so hard for you to hit with the fly swatter all of those animals perceive the world at more than a hundred frames per second. So think about that. I said we would see like 12 to 15 frames per second. Some people more, some people less, but it's around there. That fly that you're trying to hit with the fly swatter is perceiving more than a hundred frames per second. So that's why it is so hard to hit, because it's seeing everything faster than you are. And when you're swinging at it, you're almost moving in slow motion to that fly. Now we are actually going to take advantage of our slow vision today to create an optical illusion for ourselves. What you'll need to do this is this template and there is a link in the description below for you to be able to download this template. You go ahead and print it out. You'll need some scissors, some glue, and a thin wooden dowel or a skewer, something like that. Now I have printed my paper on construction paper or cardstock, so it's actually a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger. You, if you only have regular computer paper to print it out on, you might want to also get some index cards to stick the pieces to. If you just use the regular paper, it can be a little bit flimsy and a little bit floppy, and it, it kind of ruins the illusion. So once you've got everything you need, let's get started. Now the first thing you're going to do is just cut out each of the four images 
on our template. Okay? Now once you've got all four of these cut out, if you don't have them on cardstock and you just have regular paper, I would suggest gluing each piece onto a different index card. That way it'll have some rigidity and it'll be stiff enough to work with what we're doing. Next thing we're going to do is take each piece and fold it in half with the front or the picture side into the fold. So like I said, the picture side goes into the fold. So you should have four pieces that are folded with the images to the inside. Next you're going to take two of them. It doesn't really matter which two, but you want to make sure that they are both facing the same direction. And you are going to glue two of those half pieces together. So get the glue on there, take the two halves, put them together, and line them up as close as you can get them. Press them together. So there we've got two halves glued together. Now we're going to take a third half and we're going to glue that to one of the other sides. But again, make sure that you have it the right direction. So I've got them upright this way. So I need to put it upright this way. So now you've got this nice X or cross with images on three sides, but one side that is blank. Before we glue on the last side, we're going to glue in our skewer or dowel. So you're going to put just a little bit of glue into the middle of the corner there. And you don't need a whole lot of glue, but enough to make it stick. You're going to set that right in the center. And then you probably want to put a little bit more glue, just a little bit, along the inside. Next we're going to take our last piece and glue it to the blank sides that we have. And again, line it up right, press it together. Once you've got them all attached, okay, you need to just set it and let it dry for just a minute or two. Now once all four pieces are glued on there and it's had a chance to dry, we can use it to create our optical illusion. So just looking at it, you can see each side is a different image, right? As you go a little bit faster, you see those images come by a little bit more quickly, don't they? Now, if you start to get a lot faster, and it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, because the camera actually has an even worse pickup rate than our eyes, but if you do it yourself, you'll see that the separate images start to disappear and come together until it just looks like you have a picture of a pumpkin, doesn't it? Or it, I guess it's a jack-o'-lantern. So again, if you can go fast enough, you'll start to lose the individual pictures and just see one picture of a jack-o'-lantern. And that is how our eye perceives things that are moving a little bit too fast for it to process. So I hope now you can understand a little bit better about how your eyes work and what the light is doing throughout your eye and then how it is perceived by your brain. And if you want to do some more experiments with optical illusions and how your eye perceives movement, a simple one you can do is take a pad of sticky notes or post-it notes 
ones that are all stuck together on the same side. And then on each note, you can draw a different image. And then when you run your finger down and you flick through those images, it'll actually create an animation, like cartoons that we watch. Like if you wanted to create somebody waving, your first picture could be just their hand up. And then your next picture can be a little bit to the side, and a little bit more, and then a little bit back. And if you draw pictures in succession like that, when you flip through the pad, it will look like somebody's waving. Thank you so much for watching. It's wonderful to have you with us, and we'll see you next time. Bye!